and welcome to Involving Middle School Students in Smarter Lunchroom Design. This presentation is brought to you by Healthy Food Choices in Schools Community of Practice through eExtension.org, whose mission is to provide educational and informational tools and resources that empower school communities, including wellness committees, to make changes that encourage children to make healthier food selections in school and home. When we are introducing ourselves, my name is Natalie Tazen, and I work with the Spokane Regional Health District Healthy Communities Program. My job is to increase access to healthy foods through changes in nutrition policies, food production, and purchasing systems, and cafeteria and restaurant environments. The time I spent on this pilot project was funded in part with Center for Disease Control and Prevention Community Transformation Grant Funds. Hi, my name is Kai, and I'm a student and a volunteer at Spokane Regional Health District. And I've been the project coordinator of Smarter Lunchroom Design Shaw Middle School. I started this volunteer position to gain experience in the field of nutrition. And what started as a six-month internship project grew to a 14-month project that I couldn't leave. So I'm going to provide a quick summary of the principles behind Smarter Lunchroom Design and why they work. This is also how we introduce the Smarter Lunchroom Design principles to our stakeholders in this pilot project. What is Smarter Lunchroom Design, or SLD? You're probably aware of how your environment affects what you choose to eat. Things like price, appearance, convenience, habit, and state of mind all affect those choices. Most food decisions are automatic or mindless and are controlled by environment rather than willpower. Students are known to automatically go to the lunch lines where their friends are or to the shorter lines or to the lines that they go to every day. Cornell University's Behavioral Economics in Child Nutrition Programs, or the Ben Center, created SLD using proven behavioral techniques to make low-cost and no-cost changes to the lunchroom in order to nudge students towards healthier food choices. We used Ben Center's research and resources through smarterlunchrooms.org to design and implement this project. SLD uses psychology to design an environment aimed at promoting healthier options and nudging an individual towards a particular choice. This creates satisfaction about a decision. Students really own it and are more likely to consume what they take. How do we know SLD works? because of Ben Center's research. Things like displaying creative names with veggies increases selection by 40 to 70%. The first highlighted entree on the lunch line has an 11% advantage over the second option. And asking students a simple, would you like a salad, increased sales by 33%. The Smarter Lunchroom Design SLD pilot project at Shaw all started off with in September of 2012 with inviting Dr. David Just, a co-director of the Ben Center, to Spokane to provide two trainings on SLD. Ten school districts were represented at the training and three moved forward with applying SLD principles. Spokane Public Schools, Shaw Middle School, agreed to be a pilot to apply SLD best practices to see what is effective and feasible in a middle school setting. The key players were Spokane Public School District's nutrition director, along with his lead dietitian responsible for planning all menus, the marketing manager, and a district graphic designer. From, from the Shaw School, the principal and administrative staff, teachers, of course, the cafeteria manager, her staff, and the students were all involved. Washington State University's extension program assisted in focus groups and taste tests. And of course, Kai did an amazing job coordinating the activities and interventions. We created a work plan with our partners and clearly defined roles and responsibilities from the beginning of the project. How we gathered data, we continued to implement best BEN proven practices and our plans for evaluations will all be covered in more detail in the upcoming slides. We've provided our working tools that we adapted from the Ben Center materials as resource materials that will hopefully save you time as you take on this work. 
Our goal with this project was to use SLD techniques to nudge students towards healthier choices in the lunchroom, as well as including students in our promotion methods. We chose to focus specifically on fruits and vegetables only due to our time constraints and because of the new federal requirements for fruit and vegetable consumption. This pilot project has many elements to it, and much of our time has been spent at Shaw Middle School gathering data and working with teachers, students, and cafeteria staff. We started out with a baseline assessment in order to collect data. We involved students in SLD by having them create posters, PowerPoints, and videos, and we held focus groups to really understand student perceptions and attitudes. We are currently in the middle of the implementation stage, which includes clear and creative signage, positive messaging, and adult role models to set good eating habits. We will also be working on the evaluation and dissemination stages in this spring. Our, now I'll talk a little bit about the waste studies we conducted. Our process was very straightforward. We weighed the fruit and vegetables that were offered before they went out to the cafeteria line. Then, as students were leaving the cafeteria, we collected the fresh fruit and vegetable waste in a separate trash can and weighed them. We were not surprised to see consumption levels remained about the same between the first and second waste study. Implementation of signage, verbal cues, and role modeling strategies are taking longer to implement, and we didn't expect to see a decrease in waste. Yet, cafeteria staff, we found out, need more background and experience on how and why SLD practices work. Creating time to train staff on principles of SLD is a challenge. For this reason, we are identifying and creating many presentations of concepts during staff, cafeteria staff breaks, eliciting their support and ideas, and then together coming up with proposals on how to try best practices for one week with an outside observer to document the impacts in student behavior. We will then share these observations and once again have a discussion with staff to identify what they are willing and able to sustain. SLD recommends reviewing production records to get a handle on what and how much is being served to students as an indicator of student preferences. In an effort to provide variety and minimize waste, Shaw staff, cafeteria staff, prepare the number of types of fresh fruit and vegetables they think the students will take based on previous consumption or previous selection. If students deplete one choice, the cafeteria prepares slightly more of that item the next day. These production records showed us that apples are 300 times more popular than any other item. As you can see in this graph, carrots, applesauce, peaches, raisins, and flavored craisins were the next most popular items this week for the middle school student. However, we have observed that students scan the vast array of options and often just take a default, which is selecting an apple. We would like to study if the number of fruit and vegetable options might be overwhelming to the students and potentially interfering with their ability to choose. According to a study from the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology titled, when choice is demotivating, can one desire too much of a good thing? Choice overload can be demotivating and confusing. When people have too many options to consider, they try to end the choice-making ordeal by finding a choice that's nearly satisfactory. In other words, possibly the apple. We will ask cafeteria manage, the cafeteria manager to limit the choices to five items for one week and observe if students select more items off the tray than previously and defaulting less with the apple selection. We will also interview students to see if they found it easier to make a choice. We also conducted taste tests at Shaw Middle School. So we put together around 100 taste testers of a specific salad that the cafeteria manager singled out as not selling well. To each of these, we taped a strip of paper with a short survey asking questions about how the student liked or disliked the salad and what changes they might make. After a brief introduction and announcement by the principal, we passed the taste out at both lunches and collected the surveys when the students were finished. In two out of the three taste tests we, also, we conducted, we had small incentives for participants. From the surveys, we found that students were more positive about the salads than we expected, and that seventh and eighth graders had different opinions. 
the seventh graders were more open to trying the taste and more positive overall. It might be that raising, raising awareness using techniques such as taste tests can have an impact on fruit and vegetable selection and consumption. We also did a school-wide pre-survey, and the purpose of this was to assess student perception of how different marketing approaches could help them decide what to eat. Last year in April, the school secretaries distributed our brief questionnaire to students in all classrooms and asked teachers to return them by the end of the day. We received 353 surveys representing about 77% of the student body. Our, my, our main findings showed that more than half of the students thought an easier to read menu board would help them select what to eat. Between 35 and 39% of students supported better descriptions of foods student design videos, and creative salad names. About a quarter of the students thought fruit and vegetable posters would be helpful. We will need to work with the school district nutrition director to identify options for how to modify the menu board and what other types of menu boards could be available to the school. In the interim, Cafeteria staff are printing the options onto the menu board instead of using cursive since we discovered that students cannot read cursive. The other marketing approaches have been developed but need to be applied more consistently to determine if, how, if they are helpful. We learned from student interviews that posters in the hallways are not noticed by students. We have printed and laminated smaller versions of the posters and they will go up in the classrooms this week to see if students notice them more. We will create a contest with students to identify if the slogans are resonating with the students. So we also held some focus groups at Shaw Middle School to get an idea of what the students are thinking and their attitudes. In our first focus group, we had eight leadership students and we wanted to assess student attitudes towards the fruits and vegetables available in the cafeteria. We asked them how they decide what they eat and a few things stood out, such as how important texture is to them and their concern about how something like broccoli can get stuck in their teeth. We also asked for some messaging ideas we could use to promote fruits and veggies to fellow students. And they came up with things like water droplets, that appealing visual cue that most of us know from recently sprayed grocery store fruits and vegetables. To the students, this signals fresh. The cafeteria staff now spray the apples with water before they are set out. The second focus groups we did, we provided cafeteria recipes to the students for at least five of the least popular side salads, as well as samples of two of these five salads, and asked students to taste them and come up with creative names to promote all the salads. The Spokane, as you can see, they came up with really creative names, names that an adult most likely wouldn't have come up with. The Spokane Public Schools graphics department then added graphics and font treatment to the names and provided, that were provided by students, printed them out as small index cards, size signs, and also as stickers. Cafeteria staff are responsible for displaying the, the signage. Within the next few weeks, we will be working with staff to use the student signage for one week at all lunches, make observations, and discuss with cafeteria staff the impact of the signs on student choices. We will conduct the observations without the signage to see if there is a difference. We've noticed that cafeteria staff are more on board to trying the interventions if there is a limited timeline and the results can be shared and evaluated as a group. The stickers were designed to help eliminate confusion between two items that look the same, especially for the grab-and-go line when these lids are on them. Cauliflower and potato salad were often confused, and beets were sometimes confused with cranberries. We witnessed the unexpected surprise resulting in throwing away the entire side. Cafeteria staff are not sure how much of an impact the stickers are making, so observations and discussions will be conducted with these as well and shared with staff. Cafeteria staff need to see that what they're doing makes a positive impact to stay motivated to take on the extra work. One of our other focus groups was my favorite, and it was called Chef for a Day. 
And we worked with six leadership students, three teams of two students each, in a challenge to create the best salad they could. Each team had to use at least one legume and could add as many vegetables as they wanted. We also had multiple dressings, herbs, and spices available to choose from. Once they had created and named their salad, we held a vote, and the winning salad, the super epic mega salad, was passed out in small tastes at lunchtime in the cafeteria. We worked with Shaw's art teacher with an idea to have students create posters that promoted fruits and vegetables. And here are some of the posters that the students came up with. We wanted a visual and a message. The students went on a field trip to a local grocery store to take pictures, they designed their own images, and they came up with catchy phrases. Once made, the images were blown up to poster size, framed, and hung in Shaw hallways. Time was a challenge making sure the teacher had enough time in his schedule to have students work on this project. Another challenge was actually getting students to notice the posters, as Natalie mentioned before. But from a recent student focus group, we deduced that posters would be more visible to students if they were hung in classrooms. So we plan to hang smaller versions in classrooms next month. So we know that role models are very important to students when making decisions, and teachers are role models. In November 2013, last year, we presented the background on SLD and pilot results to Shaw teachers at a staff meeting and explained the importance of how they role model healthy eating to students. We surveyed 41 teachers, or about 89% of the staff, about if they eat in the cafeteria, why or why not, and what would it take for them to buy lunch from the cafeteria. This first graph of results is not surprising. If you don't eat cafeteria food, then you can't be very aware of the foods offered. However, the next slide shows a word diagram of the main reasons why teachers say they do not eat cafeteria food. Cost was the biggest deterrent, yet a meal costs $3.10. Most people would be hard pressed to find the value and quality of salads and sandwiches that the cafeteria prepares for this price. Time was the second biggest barrier to staff buying lunch. We met with Lynn, the cafeteria manager, and discovered that meals can be pre-ordered either through a standing meal order, which the principal uses, or by going in person in the morning and placing an order. Special orders are also accommodated, such as custom-made salads and sandwiches. Several of the teachers are new and not aware of what is in the cafeteria or how to order lunch so that it is ready for them when they walk into the cafeteria. We have encouraged Lynn, the cafeteria manager, to make a presentation about ordering lunch at the next staff meeting and to consider expanding the salad and sandwich choices on the grab-and-go line. Since our presentation to the staff meeting, we've noticed more school staff eating apples and carrots in the lunchroom. So, to wrap up, the next steps that we're looking at doing between now and May, or over the next three months, is to continue the implementation and monitoring stage of this pilot. Part of this will include increasing parent awareness through the Shaw Parent Teacher Group. The PTG has been asked that information, has asked that information about menus and special diet considerations be added to the Shaw website. This information is available on the main web page of the Spokane Public School website, but we are working with Shaw administration to make this link easier to use and more obvious. We're working with the cafeteria manager, school administration, and district nutrition director to draft a description of all the healthy options in the Shaw cafeteria and how students are encouraged to choose what they prefer. Our final evaluation will be to observe the potential impact of using three interventions at once, signage, limited choices, and verbal cues on fruit and vegetable waste and consumption. We will evaluate the impact of early ordering, taste test, and value lunch comparison with teachers to see if more teachers purchase lunch from the cafeteria. Finally, the sustainability of SLD will be a coordinated effort with the WSU Extension Program, and university students in the area. 
currently, WSU Extension is in many schools and school districts through, throughout Spokane County uh, teaching students how to cook nutritious foods. Moving into SLD is a natural progression for their work, and we are excited to share what we have learned and to support their work. In summary, this pilot has been and continues to be very rewarding and encouraging. Stakeholder support has been critical to this project and to spreading this work throughout the district. You can see the quality of the student involvement through the posters and the names they created, and this would not be possible without teacher support and guidance. Smarter Lunchroom Design Sustainability is promising with continued Washington State University involvement and Spokane Public School support of more marketing of healthy options. Challenges, however, are a reality. Time is multifold, including the time to work with cafeteria staff, students, and administration on a coordinated effort to promote this work. Cafeteria staff and students are extremely rushed, and this undermines the time and effort of preparing the food as well as the time to taste it. This is, of course, a nationwide trend as the school day has only so many minutes and testing requirements are becoming more and more demanding. Just last week, we made some observations on timing during Shaw's lunch. Cafeteria staff have 10 minutes to serve between 210 and 260 students. Each student has 30 minutes to leave class, drop off their books, walk to the cafeteria, wait in line, get their food, eat, and enjoy a short recess. On average, students have just under 11 minutes to eat their entire lunch. Systems changes in having staff prepare salads with legumes and a rainbow of colors of fruit and vegetables is very exciting and promising for exposing the next generation to health, healthy options. But it isn't nutrition until they eat it, so smarter lunchroom design must be maintained as a critical component for overall success. Just to point out, there will be several tools as part of this webinar. Um, they are primarily adapted from Ben Center tools, and you can see that they fall into the following categories. Work plans, focus groups and surveys, taste tests, working with cafeteria staff, and our consumption waste evaluation forms. We hope that by providing these forms you, and our reports that you'll be able to use this information to do your own SLD implementation in your schools. Thank you for your time. It was our pleasure to present this information to you. For more information, here is my contact.